intro to our foundational medicine making class as part of the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Lori Rose, who's going to be teaching us all about making herbal medicines. Hi. So yeah, um, I'm Lori Rose. Um, I always find it difficult to introduce myself. I'm like, what do I say? It is a weird um, thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Well, we're down here in Texas. We came down to Texas to film um, all this medicine making. And Lori's actually a teacher at the local college here. Sure. So I teach, um, it's called the Hill College Holistic Wellness Pathway at Hill College down in Texas. You can take it in person or online. And it's sort of an integrated program where I build all of my holistic nutrition background, wellness coaching background, and clinical herbalism background into one um, integrated program. And so students can come and get training and um clinical experience to then apply to three different national boards in those different areas. And part of that, of course, is herbal medicine making. And so that's what we're doing here today. She's running me through. I've never done this before, and I'm super excited for it. And we want to encourage you to do this as well, because we're going to be exploring the tastes, the tastes of the herbs, which are very foundational to understand what are the constituents and what they help with. And you'll hear Matthew talk about these a lot how the herbs taste and what they're used for. And so we have not developed a way to get you to taste these, you know, like the four dimensional video yet, but we, we hopefully this will um, inspire you to try this at home. Right. And I'll say, um, I'll give a few recommendations of teas or things you can taste at home um, that you may have laying around that go along with the flavors as we talk about them. Um, and one thing I wanted to say is Tara and I just really wanted to make sure we created a program that made herbalism accessible and fun and real and raw. We didn't want something um, where we did it all perfectly and edited out all the mistakes and then you do it at home and life happens and right. messy happens and you're like, that's not what it looked like when they did it. Um, so a lot of this, I mean, we've prepared, but a lot of this is <laughs> um, pretty fresh and yes. we, we don't know how it's going to go. So we wanted to make sure and provide that realism for you and bring the community back into herbal medicine making. So I'm here as sort of the instructor and she's here as sort of the live fresh student. So as her questions come up, they're unplanned and mm -hmm. um, we wanted to make sure and provide that because we know when you're first starting to make herbal medicine, you have questions and what if this happens or what if this happens? And so that's really um, sort of the goal behind the whole philosophy of what we're creating here. Definitely. Um, so just as an intro, one of the reasons why um, I think I was able to pick up on herbalism so easily at the beginning was I was really fortunate enough to have two teachers that taught herbs from the energetic perspective as my very two first herbal courses. Um, so my first herbal course was, was with Rosalie De La Fore. It was her Taste of Herbs course, where she teaches how just tasting the herb can tell you a lot about it. Um, it can tell you how it's gonna affect your body, what that herb can do, and how that herb is best extracted when you're making medicine, because you can use alcohol or water, or vinegar, or oils, and it's like, what do I do? Um, and her answer is always, taste it, mm -hmm. <laughs> taste the herb, and it can tell you. Now, one caveat here, make sure you know it's not one of the toxic, deadly plants, right? Make sure you know what you're tasting right. um, before you taste the herbs. And then my second course was called Foundational Herb Craft with Jim McDonald, and he teaches how to use herbs from an energetic perspective. So if you know the energetics of your health issue and you know the energetics of plants, through their taste, um, then you know which herb works for you. And a lot of people tend to think of these concepts as advanced herbalism, but I think that's because of the disassociation we now have with our own senses. We think the only way to learn about things is through reading about them. So we're like, oh, calendula is good for this and ginger is good for this. Well, how did they figure that out? They tasted it, right? They were connected with tasting the herbs and how that made their body feel, health issues and how those made their bodies feel, their own personalities and how they felt in their body. And that's really what energetics is, is just connecting with how the plants make you feel, how you feel, how your health issue is making you feel. Um, so 
in essence, it's not really advanced herbalism. It's the most traditional, foundational um, way to know and learn about and use herbs. And I find it, it kind of takes the pressure off because you don't have to rely on solely memorizing what every herb is for. You know, that can be helpful, but you can start to really integrate this into your life. Right. And so these things, um, well, I don't know your, you know, personal experience with tasting herbs, yeah. right? But she, she hasn't pre-tasted them. I just sort of set them up. And so I guess a little background should be what energetics are. Like there's mm-hmm. sort of three different axes of energetics. And that word sounds so fancy, but really it's just like, um, is this herb heating or cooling to the body? Um, and not temperature wise, like with a thermometer, it doesn't make your body temperature go up or down. It's just a general sensation. Um, is this herb drying or moistening? And so that you can actually sort of feel um, in the mouth, but also to the system. And then is this herb tightening and toning or is this herb relaxing? Mm. And so if you sort of back up behind that, everyone has a sort of personal, um, they call it constitution, but it's just your sort of innate personality. And you can either have a hot or a cold body personality, um, a dry or a moist body or personality, or a tense or a lax body or personality. And the example I tend to give there is like type A, it's like this really tense, hot um motivated personality right uh, right versus type b is really more lax and maybe cold and maybe kind of a chill personality Mm -hmm. um because we tend to think of we're more familiar with those terms um but even in the south so i've learned that this is more of like a southern um vernacular as opposed to um a nationally used terminology and I learned that through talking to people living in other states and they're like, I don't know what that means. But here we say hot hot natured or cold natured. Hmm. And so like so in Texas you can go from forty degrees to seventy degrees in the same day, which Tara has experienced. Yeah. <laughs> She's been here. I'm waiting for the seventy degree day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the hot natured people are wearing shorts when it's 40 degrees Absolutely. and the cold natured people are wearing coats when it's 80 degrees. Right. And so we've just always said that. And my mom said that and my family says that, and it had nothing to do with herbalism, right. Or constitution. They didn't know what that meant, Mm -hmm. but we know for hot natured or cold natured, um, dry and moist or dry and damp, that tends to not really be common speak anywhere I found, but like, For me, my mouth tends to always be dry. My nasal passages are dry. My hair is dry. My hands are dry. Um, So I would say I have a dry constitution versus a more damp constitution. Congestion um, tends to happen more often. Um, Sweating really easily. Greasy hair, that sort of thing. So um, you can sort of just do a self-assessment and no one fits perfectly along those three different axes, right? Mm -hmm. And it can change with the seasons and ages and health issues, all sorts of things. Um, But that's sort of what those three different energetics are, Mm -hmm. right? There's a temperature-based energetic, a moisture-based energetic, and then a sort of um, tense versus lax tissue state or personality type energetics. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and when it's, it makes sense once you start thinking of it that way, you can see it in people and in things. Mm-hmm. And um, that's the fun part, you know, is bringing it to real life, like in our, our everyday lives. Right, and you can take entire courses on this, and we can't cover all of that yeah. in this short little intro. Um, but Matthew Woods' Practicing Traditional Western Herbalism book is great about talking about the energetics of tissue states. Jim McDonald's PDFs on his um, foundational herb craft, he has two PDFs that really get into the different energetics of tissue states. So if you know that mm-hmm. and you know you're, say, cold and dry, well, the herbs that I need are going to balance that. And so they're going to be heating and moistening. Mm -hmm. So you always want to use herbs that are going to bring you back into balance as opposed to bring you further and further away from that sort of middle sweet spot. And so you may be thinking, well, how do you know if an herb is heating or moistening or cooling? Well, you taste it, right? Mm -hmm. And so as we're doing these taste tests, we're going to be paying attention to Oh, is this heating? Does this feel heating to me or does this feel cooling? Does this feel drying or does this feel moistening? Um, And this is a sort of introductory thing. So some herbs um, 
can be like locally moistening or locally drying, but over the long term or systemically, you know, they have an opposite effect or it takes longer to feel that effect. So we're not going to feel all three axes on all of these, but we'll at least get an idea mm -hmm. of what these flavor profiles tend to do energetically to the body. And then you can use that taste to figure out what herbs you need in different times. That sounds really good. Exciting. Okay, awesome. You ready to I am ready. Taste it? Now I know and trust you, so I know none of these are poisonous. None of so these that's, are poisonous. That's check one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one, right? Um, so we're going to go over several different flavor profiles. And the first one is aromatic. So aromatic are the herbs that you can smell. And I tend to start with these because they're the ones where you walk down the spice aisle or you open your spice cabinet. Those are the aromatics. You can smell them. And the constituent you're smelling are aromatic oils. And so I'll just let you take a whiff of this. Yes, very can, aromatic. Yeah, that has a smell, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if you smell it, it's an aromatic herb. And so now I'll let you taste it. I didn't tell her what it is. Mm -mm. <laughs> Smell like ginger. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Yeah, I made ginger. it strong so you can feel it. Yeah. yeah, definitely a sipper. Yes. So I'm actually fairly new to the tasting. Like I taste foods and so forth. But as far as herbal tasting, I'm being vulnerable here mm -hmm. and letting you know. So um, Lori's going to correct me if I'm not using the terminology. Right. And I'm so glad she said that because this is... This is a lifetime of learning about herbs. Right. No one's going to come up here the first time and be like, oh, that's moistening right. and systemically <laughs> warming. Like, that's not how it works. Right. It's just more about reacquainting ourselves with how the herbs make us feel. And I've sat in on hundreds of hours worth of classes with Matthew, but you have to experience uh -huh. it. And so this is what we're encouraging you to do through these classes too, is to try it, is to do it and, and to live with the herbs. That's one of the most important things. I'm glad you said that because I forgot to mention it. You can read books about herbs all day long, but until you taste them, mm -hmm. you don't know them. You don't understand why something is a relaxing nervine and makes you chill out. You don't understand why why something is a vulnerary and heals your skin. Mm -hmm. You don't get it until you taste it or sense it or feel it. So along those sort of, so remember we're doing hot, heating versus cooling, mm -hmm. drying versus moistening. And you, we may be able to do the tense versus lax here, possibly. So I could tell just by smelling it that it's ginger. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad we've chatted in between because I've gotten to feel it a bit more than yeah. just in my mouth. So it feels warming, mm -hmm. and especially as it as the time goes by, I feel it more warming in my chest, right, right in here. Um, drying, mm -hmm. I would. I don't taste that right away, but maybe it's because I'm talking now you're too. Talking. Um, so normal then if I hadn't taken it it wouldn't be drying out so fast uh, I'm trying not to put in what I do know about right. ginger so that's what's <laughs> fun about doing herbs that you don't know um but those would be the primary ones that I sense yeah so heating and drying and in general if you smell and taste an herb and you're like oh that's aromatic I can smell it aromatic oils um tend to be heating they're circulatory stimulants um, and they tend to be drying. Now, I keep saying tend to be because you're going to look something up and be like, oh, this is aromatic, but it's moistening and cooling, you know, um, because herbs don't read books, right? And, um, <laughs> there's always a scale. So like cayenne is way more heating than ginger and ginger is way more heating than chamomile, right? And they're all considered warming. Hmm. Um, so there's a scale, there's a gradient, and also there's always exceptions. Herbs always break the rules, which may be why I like them. <laughs> um, so you can know if you're like, oh, this is aromatic, this is going to tend to heat me up. So it would be great for someone with a more cold constitution. It's also going to be drying. So it's going to be great for someone with a more damp constitution or a health issue that's cold and damp and or damp. Um, and again, there's exceptions. Why it's so popular if you have a cold. Right, like exactly. Like a wet cold. Right, and that was the next thing I was going to say is aromatic oils. There's some generalizations you can make about them. They tend to relax the smooth muscle system. Mm -hmm. They tend to invigorate the nervous system. So like rosemary is known to stimulate memory and concentration. 
Um, but they're also expectorant. So aromatic oils are antimicrobial. They're expectorant, so they can help sort of clear respiratory issues, um, that sort of thing. And so, I, and I didn't tell her that ahead of time. And she said she felt it warming right here in the chest area. So awesome. So that's aromatic oils. Visit us at the Matthewwoodinstituteofherbalism.com.